<laughs> what we going to do today? Okay, so today what we have here is a very basic setup. We have no GPU, but that is not focused for today. <laughs> but here's the thing. I know a lot of us uh, actually have a PC, but it is still using a stock Intel cooler mm. or stock AMD cooler. That's what that's about. Okay, so stock cooler, I think it only comes with all the non-K CPUs, right? Uh, Non-K CPUs, especially, I mean, if you get those uh, i3, i5 and Ryzen's. Ryzen's, yeah. Okay. You get stock coolers. But today's, what CPU we have here? Okay, in our case, we don't have lower end i3 or i5. The lowest end CPU we got here is the actually Intel Core i7 11700, non-K variant. 11700, yeah. okay. And I think we, at first we didn't use the CPU cooler before, so thermal paste is stock. Everything is stock for this cooler. So the cooler actually still got the stock thermal paste on it because this exact cooler is taken from one of the uh, 11 gen Core i3. No, not 11 gen, it's the 10 gen, 10 100. So this one. is the new stock cooler without the copper at the bottom, correct? Yeah. So today, after we do a test on this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna yes. test an aftermarket cooler. This is the ID Cooling SE226 XT. Okay, what's the key highlight of this thing? Okay, the key highlight of this thing is actually they have ARGB mm -hmm. and it's a tower cooler mm -hmm. and uh, six heat pipes. So pretty much it's a very enticing cooler for those users who want to upgrade from a stock cooler so today we are going to test if this is a good option for you to upgrade from especially especially if you are still using a stock cooler yes the the main problem with the stock cooler is the noise Mm -hmm. This fan can spin up to 3000 RPM. Only 3000? I thought it's higher. No, that is AMD. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, 3000. 3000 RPM. So, we're gonna let this run for a while, but in the meantime, we're gonna talk about why you should upgrade to an aftermarket cooler, even though, yeah, just, just don't use the stock cooler. Everyone's calling it trash for a reason. Number one, noisy. Number two, once dust get kicked up, it's very difficult to clean. It's quite annoying to clean, I would say. And then thirdly, kind of looks ugly. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty ugly with the plastic build. Yeah, and the best part is all the ugly cables. Yes, the color-coded <laughs> cables. So the reason, one of the main reasons why you want to change aftermarket cooler is of course it looks beautiful, quieter, even though the temperature might not improve that much. We have to test that later. Yep. It will still be quieter because the fan doesn't run at 3000 RPM. Oh my yeah. god, hardware failure. Mm. Yeah, now what the heck? Everything stopped. Anyway, it reached 99 degrees Celsius, so I just think that something happened and then it just don't want to move. I'm gonna take a picture for you guys. I mean, this is a sign of uh, overheating, and then the I believe the motherboard self protection I mode. I mean, the self protection mode kicks in and then yep. stop everything. Now. I think we can move into the cooler already. So let's get it started and see how this thing goes. Yeah, so do keep in mind that our initial test with the stock cooler, stressing CPU, FPU and cache, it went to 99 degrees Celsius. So let's shut this down and then we change to the ID cooling. First we need to unbox this. You do the honor. Okay, so let's see what's inside. Installation guide, you do the honors on this. So we have installation guide. No, this is accessory box. Oh, I got scared. <laughs> full black beam. Oh my god. This is god. beautiful. This is full nickel plating. This hey, the is... fins are very interesting shape. So it's kind of like wavy. This is the fan. Okay. Okay, we have the fan. And nothing else. So we only got three boxes inside. Technically, okay. this is not a box, but it's just a shroud. Pipes. So you got six heat pipes. Actually, is it six heat pipes? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, six heat pipes. Oh! They also have a very special screwdriver, I think. Uh, we need to check the box, accessory yeah, box. Installation for the time process being. will be interesting. They got a hole here at the top. So if you look down, there's the screw hole for this. So I do expect them to give a screwdriver so we can screw it easily. 
Yeah, 120 millimeter fan back plate. AMD or Intel? You need to make sure. Uh, let me check. Oh, screwdriver! But we don't have screwdriver. They okay. really don't have ah. Uh. No, 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 no. Mm, you're gonna be in so much trouble trying to screw this thing in. The back plate is exclusive for Intel platform. As for the AMD ones, you will have to reuse your existing uh, oh, the back plate. Okay. So you just have to screw in the top mounting plate. Okay, interesting. And the adjustable ones is because they need to support different uh, Intel generations. generations like, yeah. Okay, so let's get a motherboard out. Okay, let's. Remember to rip out the sticker. <laughs> yeah, this is very important. We, we, we did a few tests last time where we forgot to peel off this. Then the temperature was sky high. So this screwdriver is not included in the box. We stole it from some other products. No lah. It's more like, I think ID cooling really need to... They need to include a screwdriver. Include a screwdriver. Because a lot of people don't have such long screwdrivers. Even we don't. We have to I steal mean, it from somewhere else. Yeah. Especially, you need not just long and actually thin yeah. screwdriver. You know what? I should actually show you how this, this installation goes. See? Then you, you get an idea why. Because one of the mounting screw is at the bottom of the heat sink. So they actually made a hole here just for the screwdriver to go in, down and then screw it. Anyway, so, give me the fan brackets. The fan bracket. So they actually included two sets of them. Oh, so you can put push-pull. Uh, you can do push-pull configuration. But the package only includes one fan. So the second fan you have to purchase separately. So you can choose to either directly plug into the motherboard's ARGB socket if your motherboard supports ARGB. Otherwise, they also included this uh, adapter or what do you call this thing? Controller. Controller. Yeah. So this one converts from the Your ARGB SATA. to SATA so it becomes passive mode. La. It's a passive mode so whenever you it turn not on... not really passive. You can still do controls using... I mean, it is a controller but uh, changing the ARGB will be more hassle because you need to like access mm -hmm. into the internal of your PC and take apart the case just yeah. to change colors. Anyway, let's do IDA test now. And we're gonna start off with stability test. Why then? Again, stressing CPU, FPU, cache. I might hit start in 3, 2, 1, go. What was the temperature just now? 99 straight away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so the temperature now, immediately after starting, it didn't shoot up to 99. It's still about 75, 73-ish. It's actually quite good. We'll let it run for a while, see if there's any error because previously I think self-protection kicked in. It crashed entire thing. It crashed real bad. Moments later. It's a lot quieter. It goes up to like 2K. 2000 RPM. So one piece of interesting equation that you can think of is that the cubic feet per meter, mm. amount of air push per cubic, per, per density of air push. Uh, um, smaller fans to push the same amount of air will need higher RPM, hence yeah. more noise and also more dust. And on top of that, the fan design is also part of the, mm -hmm. I mean the, the, the cooling efficiency as well as the noise level. Yes. So for the Intel ones, of course this is, uh, I think this is 80 mil. 80 or 92. 80 or 92 mil fan and it is way thicker, the blades. Yes. So it's not exactly efficient in terms of pushing through all the air. Mm -hmm. That's why they have to go 3000 RPM to yeah. do that. That's why like you see, I think more than 10 years ago, 80 mil fans were still famous. I remember they're still pure aluminium 80 mil fans. Those were extinct real fast in favor of 120 and even some larger ones like 200 or 240 mils. Those are fantastic fans if you want a quiet system with very low RPM but still push the same amount of air. Mm. So I personally use a very big case fan. <laughs> Five minutes later. It's yes. been 10 minutes. So this thing is nearly 10 minutes now, 30 seconds more. 
I realized one thing. This fan, the included fan, has rubber pads. Oh. So when you mount it here. Oh yeah, yeah. So it absorbs vibration even quieter than before, which is really good. Yeah. Temperature uh, is kept off at 80 degrees. That's the highest that we've seen. Zero thermal throttling. So performance is actually really good out of this cooler. It's much yeah. better than this thing. And there's a reason why this thing is called trash. Now we have proven you why. So what you see now, we sync it up with the motherboard's color. So yeah, color cycling. I mean, ARGB anyway, so it works. Yeah, it syncs with the motherboard, the RAM. If all your devices actually has ARGB support, then you can just let them do whatever you want. And the noise level is surprisingly quiet. I mean, given that it's like 1900 RPM. Yeah, and one more thing, right? This kind of smaller fans tends to have a much higher pitch of hum. So it's annoying. Mm. Yeah, this one is more lower pitch, so it's bearable. Yeah. So what's the price of this thing? Okay, the price for the SE226 XT, they actually have two versions for mm -hmm. this tower cooler. One is ARGB version and the other one is pure black. Mm. Uh, so which one you want to know first? Pure black. Pure black starts from 179 ringgit. Okay, not As bad. As for the ARGB, it's 199 ringgit in Malaysia. So it's Ooh. only 20 ringgit more expensive. So you pay, literally you pay 20 ringgit to swap off the fan with an uh, ARGB one. Fans and probably this uh, ARGB controller as mm. well. So okay. 20 bucks. I'd say the price is actually fair. I think it's fair. Yeah. For a I mean, you're, you're giving a, quite a good upgrade. La. You get actually. better performance overall. Then you get better thermals, better sound quality, better mental health. And also, I mean, it looks good looks in your better. build. Mm -hmm. Even with full black option, I can say that you see the top cover here is just pure black. Personally, I would prefer pure black. I don't really like likes in my PC, but that's up to you, personal preference. Mm -hmm. And for price of 179, right, pure black. Yeah, that's good. That's I'm, good. I'm gonna Even 199 that. for ARGB, I think is fine. And uh, no complaints other than please include a screwdriver to screw yeah. in that, that screw, that's it. That's really the, the only downside for this thing. Mm -hmm. If you have the two already, so you won't have any issue, but remember, it will need a long and thin screwdriver like this one. Yeah, everything else about this product is... I mean, it's all good. Real budget-friendly, good. Performance is nice. It handles up to uh, 220 watts of TDP. So, oh yeah. Okay. So, yeah, look, yeah, real good. And that's it for today's uh, a quick view of the ID Cooling SE226 XT. Yeah, this is a very live test situation. So <laughs> yeah, what you see is literally what we see for the first time. Yep. So if yeah. you have any questions, you can leave it down in the comment section below. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm. So still 80 degrees, zero thermal throttling. Good.